another day, another Madonna album. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. My name is Beth, if you are new here and I like to talk about music. And today we are going to be listening to Like A Virgin by Madonna, which is another 80s album. I know you probably didn't think I was gonna stick around in the 80s, but last night I put her discography on repeat. I had to like keep an eye out in case there was a song that came on that I haven't covered yet to skip it. But Like A Virgin, the song came on and I immediately became obsessed with the opening few chords. I don't remember specifically, but I just was like immediately drawn to it. And so I decided to go forward with this album. Also, some of you guys were like having issue with the fact that I'm going in such a random order, which I totally understand. But I think for me personally, this is really working for me because if I had started out and I had listened to her self-titled album and I had listened to True Blue, I don't necessarily know that I would continue with her discography because I'm not a huge 80s person and those albums really took a minute to grow on me. But because I'm so far into her discography, I'm more able to give a chance to albums that I might not otherwise. And so I'm so glad that I've done her discography in this order because it's really worked for me personally. But I understand your concerns and for her videography, I am planning on going in a chronological order so I can see her growth and development as an artist. So yeah, True Blue, I kind of touched on it in my last video when I did an update at the end of the video. And that album has grown on me a ton. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and it's so smooth and silky and every song kind of just flows seamlessly into the next. It's very easy to just hit play on the first track and listen to the entire album. I will say the only two tracks I don't really care for entirely are Jimmy Jimmy and Love Makes the World Go Round. Again, those two tracks kind of mar an otherwise perfect track list for me. But if you love Jimmy Jimmy and Love Makes the World Go Round, I'm not here to dole that for you. This is one of the best discographies I have ever visited in my life. Um, I feel pretty confident saying that because I have gotten through so many of her albums. She has something for everyone. She is so versatile in her sound, in her vocal vocal performance, in her instrumentals, in her vibes, in her lyrical content. And it is all so masterfully done beyond what the average artist puts out. And that's not to diminish other artists, but it is just to say that I believe Madonna is on a different level of music. And I know I'm not the first to say it and I won't be the last, but it is to say that as a 28 year old woman who's discovering her music for the first time in 2024, it all holds up incredibly well to this day. It absolutely feels like it could be released in today's age and just be ahead of its time. Like I wanna echo what you guys have said about her music just being so freaking iconic, revolutionary, trailblazing, trend setting, but also kind of ahead of its time. I'm just having so much fun and I'm glad you guys are too. It makes me very happy. So we are moving forward today with Like a Virgin, which was released after her self-titled album and before her True Blue album. I believe this was the album some of you guys were saying really made her who she is today. It really set her on this path of fame and success and made everyone know her name. So obviously an iconic album in her discography and I'm really excited to get into it. I am not seeing any song titles that I immediately recognize, but I believe that there's a possibility I will recognize some things. After I listen to the nine tracks that are on Like a Virgin, I am hoping to go and listen to three additional tracks, Into the Groove, Crazy For You, and Gambler, which I believe were separate singles released around the same time of this album. Someone suggested doing them along with this album and I thought that made sense because it's only nine tracks, so might as well add a few additional fun little numbers in there. But without further ado, let's get into the first track. It is called Material Girl. I feel like I've heard this song, but I don't remember anything about it. Is this a song that's like, I'm a material girl living in a material world? And I am a material girl. Is that that song? Give me a beat. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's ringing bells. Literally. Yeah, yep, yep. I knew I would recognize it, but I didn't think I would immediately recognize it. Her voice is so different. Sound effects that kind of make it sound expensive. It's so bouncy and fun. Oh my gosh, 
gosh, that's so funny. Some boys romance, some boys slow dance. That's all right with me. If they can't raise my interest, then I have to let them be. Some boys try and some boys lie, but I don't let them play. Only boys that save their pennies make my rainy day. Okay, Shakespeare. <laughs> like, she's like, if you ain't got the money, you can't have my time. Interesting, interesting, okay. I mean, she's a material girl. What am I supposed to say? I can't blame her. Although I'm kind of blaming her because she's just dating these guys for their money. And I am a material girl. <laughs> it's that talk singing. And I am a material girl. The vocal style is already so different from what I just listened to on True Blue with that like open, gorgeous, pure, clean tone she had on that album. This is like dirty and I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's just like raw and it's very almost marchy, completely different. <laughs> And a lot of fun sound effects and like little moments throughout that kind of add a layering. You know, that's a motto to live by. <laughs> So I think there's a double meaning here. I think on the surface, it's a song about being with a rich guy, but if you look a bit deeper, it seems like it is about her music. If they don't give me proper credit, I just walk away. The boy with the cold hard cash is always Mr. Right. If they can't raise my interest, then I have to let them be. Double meaning. Some boys lie and some boys try. Again, could be referring to the industry. They are living in a material world. They have all the material and I am a material girl. I made this music, give me my money. That's the vibe that I'm getting. Maybe I'm looking too far into it, but if that is the case, genius. Absolutely genius song. And I am a material girl. I really like that sound effects, how it just kind of pops. A material, a material world. Yeah. Material. Really love her ad libs. Material. Fade out. Material. I wasn't ready for it to be over, Madonna. Um, I really liked it. It's a classic. I mean, obviously, I've heard it a lot. Um, I just didn't really remember it right away. For the first half of the song, I was like, okay, it's a bit service level. You know, she was talking about being with a rich guy, not really interesting me. But when I caught on to what may have been a double meaning, that's when I really respected the song on a whole new level. And I thought it was absolutely genius. I love a song that has a metaphor, has a double meaning. I just, I love that in songs. And so I love that she did that potentially. The next one is called Angel. Okay, is it gonna be a ballad? <laughs> Sneaky. <laughs> she loves an ad-libbed laugh. That's what I've learned through the 80s albums is like girlfriend just loves to laugh and I'm here for it. Give me the joy. Okay. True blue wholesomeness. Open vocals. And just now I realize Ooh, you're an angel I see it in your eyes Walking down a crowded avenue All the faces seem like nothing next to you Aww. And I can't hear the chat This is so cute! You must be an angel Already vocally so different from the first track. She's got the gorgeous, pure, clean sound of her voice again. It's those open vocals. Gorgeous. I love when she sings like that. True Blue, the entire album she was singing like that. And that's why vocally it's one of my faves. Um, yeah, when she, the lower she goes with her voice, I just think the more beautiful and the more satisfying it becomes. She has such a, such an impactful lower register. The talk singing, it's fine. I'm not opposed to it necessarily, but when she really sings like this, it's gorgeous. And this one's cute as hell. Like who gave her the right to give me such a wholesome, you know, such a wholesome kind of angelic song. You know, it really is angelic. It's like, She's this innocent little cherub. It's just really sweet. It's giving me true blue. 
It is. I'm gonna say true blue. I am. Super repetitive chorus. It's not my favorite chorus she's ever done. Yes. 80s instrumentals. Yeah, I love Build it up, give the layers. Wink, wink. Oh my god, the notes. The notes, Madonna. Kind of a tinny production. Sort of metallic. <laughs> oh. Let's just ride it out, man. Fade it, man. <laughs> Fade it out, brother. <laughs> I'm so excited for Like a Virgin. Angel. Okay, Madonna. That was a cute as little song. I enjoyed it. Uh, the chorus was not my favorite thing in the world. In my opinion, it wasn't like the catchiest, most impactful chorus she's ever done. It was very repetitive. You know, it was fine. Like it was a vibey little moment, but I think my favorite part was the verses. Just super cute, super wholesome. Like a virgin, maybe she is, you know, saying there's gonna be an innocence to this album because that song, you know, again, innocence. Virgin usually associate with being super innocent. So maybe that's the whole vibe behind this album. But we're only two tracks in, so I'm getting ahead of myself. The next one, I'm so excited for. It is called Like a Virgin. It is the titular moment, the titular track. And I heard the first 10 seconds of it last night and was absolutely obsessed. The best thing I've ever heard. Again, maybe I had the wrong impression of this album, but I thought it was going to be very racy and very, you know, heat and passion and sensual lyrics. And it's so far basically the opposite. I was sad and blue, but you made me feel shiny and new. Like a virgin. Like a virgin. Yes. Oh yeah! This punchy production mixed with her vocal delivery makes me feel this kind of sensual energy, like fingers on skin, like a sensual but innocent type of touch, like fingers on skin, um, <clears throat> you know, caressing your loved one or something. That's kind of the energy I get from her vocal delivery. I don't know if that'll make sense to anyone else, but it's like, if you get it, you get it. I really like it. It's, you know, it kind of goes along with the lyrics and her saying touch for the very first time. Love the chorus. <laughs> kind of a subtle sound. Like it's not trying overly hard, but I think it works well. Kind of like live to tell. <laughs> She has these grand moments with her vocals. I love the explosions. Like a oh, it's just so satisfying the way she delivers it. So <laughs> just like this song. Oh. oh. Give me it, girl. <laughs> One thing I've noticed is at the end of her song, she'll do some sort of production switch or some sort of instrumental change up. That's so cool. 
and it just really gives you something else. Like it adds another layer, another piece of interest to the song. I remember she did that in Love Makes the World Go Round. You know, at the end of the song, right when I was kind of ready to move on, she just totally switched it up and gave me this really cool instrumental breakdown. Definitely something that stands out about that song to me. <laughs> the production's kind of like a heartbeat, right? Maybe I'm reading too far into it. Her heart's beating really fast. <laughs> Probably faster than what's healthy. Um, okay, like a gosh darn virgin. I really liked you. <laughs> um, that was my favorite so far. I thought it was so tastefully done. It wasn't trying too hard to be a hit song, if that makes any sense. It just felt like she happened to make a song that was really iconic. And it's a song that kind of sneaks up on you. Um, and obviously it did end up being the biggest song on the album, but I don't think it was trying too hard. And I think that's why I really liked it and felt kind of drawn to it. That was a song that I've heard over the years, but it had been a really long time since I'd heard it. The next one is called Over and Over. I like it. <laughs> Storytelling. song that I really needed in my life right now because you know it's so hard for me as a perfectionist to get up again after I've made a mistake or something has gone wrong in my life and this song is just really speaking to me right now and I must say I'm really loving the message of it it just is really encouraging me it's simple but effective if you get down get back up again one thing about me is when I get down, I will always get back up because what other choice do I have? What other choice do any of us have, really? When we get down, you have no other choice but to get back up. You can't stay down or else you just give up on life and that's no fun. So don't give up on life, <laughs> just get back up again. I mean, for real, she's healing me right now from the inside out. <laughs> Where is she going? <laughs> I guess to the top. You try to That is the lyric. You try to criticize my drive. I lose, I don't feel paralyzed. I get up again. It's so simple, but it's so impactful to me right now. And I really needed this encouragement in my life today. Thank you, Madonna. <laughs> Thank you. Gosh. And I think this is one of the things that has made her have such a legacy and such a long career in music. Obviously, along with the fact that she's very talented. But talent aside, like you can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't have the ability to get up when life knocks you down and when people get you down, you're not gonna go very far. And that's something that is very challenging to do. Probably, again, the more and more famous you get, I'm sure that's more and more difficult because more and more people are against you and what you're trying to do. And so she has had to overcome, overcome, overcome. It's that resilience and that strength that has gotten her so far in her career. Rebel Heart. Catchy too. Honestly, I really like this one. I hear a different beat. Like I go a different way. I go off the beaten path. The repetition in this one kind of makes sense to me because like over and over and over again. Another alarm sound potential. Hurry up and get your ass out of bed. Over and over again. Oh, I liked it. I liked it. <laughs> It went on a really long time. You know, I might have cut it down just a touch. The next one is called Love Don't Live Here Anymore. Okay, 
I'm gonna cry, no. Um, but I do wonder if this is a ballad. Uh. <laughs> hmm. It's like this tinny metallic sound. Does anyone else get that? You abandoned me. Love don't live here anymore. Kind of chaotic production, but just a vacancy. Love don't live here anymore. But then she strips it the chaos away for that line. Mm-hmm. Mastery. <laughs> you wouldn't do for me. Strings. You abandoned me. Abandonment issues, girl, I relate. <laughs> love don't live here anymore. I love the chords and the vocals that are like the choral. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't live here anymore. Just emptiness and memories on another place to stay. I don't live here anymore. Mm. Love don't live here anymore. Yeah. Build it, girl. Oh my gosh. Madonna. Vocals. <laughs> yeah. Just a the drums too, man. Oh, this one, like the production's kind of sparse. It's kind of odd to me, but it kind of works at the same time. Um, it does feel very intentional. Like love don't live here anymore. She strips it all away, and it's this very vacant sound. You know, it kind of feels like you're in this empty ghost town. And then she'll hit you with the drum right after that, and it's just so impactful because she kept you waiting and then hit you with it. Mm, and the strings and the build of this song. Like this is the build that me personally, sound wise, I was missing and live to tell. This is the kind of build, the kind of grandiosity that I was looking for in that track. And there's nothing wrong with that track being more subtle. It's just a personal preference of my own. This type of production, I, I connect with a little bit more. But like production wise though, do I think it's on the level of live to tell? No, I think live to tell has better sounds within it and it makes more sense to me but this track has a better build to it, in my opinion. Oh, just, yes. <laughs> She's getting angrier and more passionate. Yes. She's like out of breath. Like she's just so tired of being abandoned. I really loved that one. The more it went on, the more I was like, what am I listening to? Like, this is just a masterpiece. Yeah, I think that was my favorite so far. I don't know, it's a toss up between that one and Like a Virgin. I don't know, I just love the build so much. And like the way her vocals kept getting more and more passionate, more and more raw and built up and angry throughout the song. It was just full of passion. I really love that. Cause it was a very repetitive song lyrically. Like the chorus was pretty repetitive but because the production kept changing up and her vocal delivery kept changing up, I think that kept it more interesting to listen to. The next one is called Dress You Up. Feels kind of like we're gonna get a fun, upbeat little number. A lot of head bobbing on this album. And sparkly elements. Satin sheets and Giving material, girl. I've got something that you really like. Yeah. Some 
of these tracks have this mixture of like a sensual energy, but also a very innocent and very youthful energy about them. This one in particular. Let me cover you with velvet kisses. So nostalgic. Create a that's made for you. I'm gonna be your Silas. Yeah, there's a male voice in the back. I love the layers of that. Yep, yep. <laughs> Shred it! <laughs> Instrumentally the best era of her music, I don't care. Such an unexpected chorus. The builds are back. Every song really builds in an impactful way. You know, the vocal delivery, sh her changing it up, getting more passionate throughout the song, adding voices of other singers in the background as, as the song progresses, the production getting more interesting, the instrumental breaks, it's, it all just builds in a very cool way. That's the part. <laughs> Yes! I love the weird vocals. <laughs> this is so weird and kind of random. I don't know if it'll make sense to anyone else, but it kind of sounds like she's in a dressing room when she sings this song because the vocals have this kind of echoey energy that sounds like she's singing from inside a small room. I wouldn't put it past her, honestly. <laughs> Love you, boy. <laughs> Dang, I'm really enjoying this album so far. Like, not that I was expecting not to, but with her 80s albums, I always go in just a little bit nervous because I'm not a huge 80s person. You know, it's not my main genre that I usually pull from, but I'm really enjoying this so far. I must say that one was really, really fun. And I really liked the vocal delivery, her kind of echoey vocals. And like, it was so, so different again from any vocals I've really heard from her in the past. And I love the additions of like other singers in the background and the way the song built. It was a really fun song. The next one is called Shooby Doo. <laughs> uh, no expectations. Shooby Doo Be Doo. Shooby dooby doo la la. Hitting me with that deep meaning right away. <laughs> Baby, here's what I see. What do you see? <laughs> so much confusion. It's killing me. Transition. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I love the idea of that transition there of like making you think the song is about to stop and then giving you a bop moment. Unfortunately, I don't think it hit hard enough to really make an impact. Well, I can't take it anymore. Can't open any door. Don't say maybe. Don't say maybe. Not her best song lyrically. Hi, saxophone. It's been a minute. Missed you. <laughs> I actually didn't really miss it, but. Second part of the song, the second half of the song, bit fuller. She was like, no la la is the second half of the song. <laughs> it's really fun to sing along to. song 
so much better than the first half, in my opinion. The first half, I was like, girl, this is just paling in comparison to the rest of the album for me. But the second half, I got so into it. It was fuller, you know, there was more there and it really just was a vibe. To get to get entranced by. That was fun. The next one is called Pretender. <laughs> Every time this song starts, I'm like, girl, where are we going? <laughs> like fish that got away. Knows her worth. That he was mine and that he never leaves. You take my friend's advice. Cause if it happens once, you know it happens twice. Oh, I love that. I'm not afraid to fall a hundred times. I'm not afraid to fall a hundred times. Y'all, Madonna is romantic and I relate because I am also a romantic. I'm a four on the Enneagram, which if you know, you know is the romantic. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'd like to think that I could change your mind. Girl, I've been there, but you can't. Just get out. <laughs> She knows, yet she falls for it. Relatable. A pretender. <laughs> Things happen much too fast. I should have stopped him and I knew it would. Cause if it happens once, you know it happens twice. I love that part of the song so much. I'm not afraid to fall a hundred times and I'll believe in all your silly lies. I love the pulling away the layering and then bringing it back. Don't say yes. that. I I like this one a lot. This is one of the danciest ones to me, low key. It just has that beat behind it that kind of gets you moving. He's a pretender. <laughs> She's like, I'm done. I'm calling you out for your bullshit. <laughs> I may ride off into the sunset with this vibe. Holy shiitake mushrooms. Four minutes and 30 seconds. Didn't feel that long. Oh my gosh, calm down. Every single time the song starts, I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh, I really like that one. I'm not gonna lie. I also feel like it's a song that's gonna grow on me more as I listen to it more because it definitely took me a minute to really get into it. It was just so fun, so dancey, so catchy, and also had relatable lyrics a little bit. And what more can I ask for? The last track on Like a Virgin, before we get into the three additional tracks I will be listening to, is called Stay. Ooh, this sounds really familiar like one of her other songs. You make my load much Ending with a hopeful love song. Storytelling on this album low-key good. I never want you to leave. Stay, darling. Stay, stay, please stay. Love these choral layering of the vocals in so many of these songs. She's really showing off her range on this one. High notes, low notes. Higher than I feel like I've heard her sing in a minute. Um, Cause I'm used to her kind of staying in that pocket of the lower range, which I think she does really, a really good job of staying in the sweet spot of her voice. But this, you know, she's kind of going up to those notes and then going right back down. It's cool to hear more of a, a range of her voice. Don't be afraid. I'm always afraid when you bring in those creepy vocals. <laughs> Scootily Bebop? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Scootily Bebop. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, um, definitely not my favorite song on the album. I just feel like it didn't stand out to me as much as a lot of the other songs, but it was a fun vibe. You know, it had some really cool vocal moments. Really liked the choral background singers, um, which are kind of popping up all over this album. Really like that, adds another layer to the songs. But I really liked this album. We do have three more tracks to listen to that are, I guess, came out around the same time, but are not on this album. Crazy For You, Gambler, Into The Groove. But I really like this album. You know, for a person who is really hit or miss with 80s music, um, I must say, that I really am loving Madonna's 80s music a lot more than I ever thought I would. I don't know if it'll end up being one of my favorites from the 80s or not, but I definitely think after a first listen, I did prefer it at least to her self-titled album. There were so many, so many classic sounding songs, obviously, I know these are literally her classic songs. Like a lot of her hits were probably on this album, but it did feel very classic to me. There were very pure love songs. Again, there was like this innocence to this album that I wasn't expecting. I definitely had Madonna pegged wrong my entire life. I've thought she was this very like controversial kind of over the top figure. And while certain, you know, certain things she's done have been controversial to certain groups or certain people, she's not only that, you know, I think I had her totally Totally pegged wrong. I made assumptions based on a couple things I saw and just like assumed kind of the worst. And I regret that because, you know, she's not black and white like that. She's a whole person. She has a whole catalog of music that is so feel good and wholesome and heartfelt and meaningful. There's stories she's telling, there's messages she's getting across. She always has these meanings behind everything she does. Everything she does is intentional. And that's what makes her one of the greats. You know, that is what makes her discography so interesting to uncover because she is so intentional and she always has a message and a meaning behind every single album. And with this album, I mean, a lot of the songs just made me want to dance, bop around a little bit. Some of them weren't super deep. Not a lot of them were super deep, but I really liked it. I liked the simplicity of it. It brought me back to a much simpler time. The reason I love a song like Where's the Party so much is the simplicity of it. It's not overly complicated, but it still kind of has that storytelling in it. I don't know. I just adore the simplicity of that song so much and how it brings me back to a different era. And I think a lot of the songs on this album did the exact same thing for me. It didn't feel like she was trying to make a bunch of these bangers um, or like making them super radio friendly. It just felt like she made an album and then it happened to be a hit, if that makes sense. I don't know, especially with a song like Like a Virgin. I just, I think it's so kind of understated. So yes, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this. And I'm excited to now be going to listen to three additional tracks that someone said I should incorporate into this video, but they are Into the Groove, Crazy For You and Gambler. So we will start with Into the Groove. And you can dance for inspiration. For inspiration. stays in the same spot but keeps you on that wavelength. Chorus. Banger. 
Banger, Madonna. Not sure I said a whole lot, but I was dancing. That was a banger. It was kind of just a perfect song to like get lost in and feel the groove and get into the groove. She got me into the groove. <sighs> it was like, it, it didn't need to build. It didn't need to do anything crazy because it was just about the vibe and like the wavelength that you were on. And she just kept me on it. <laughs> just kept me riding through it. Okay, the next track I'll be listening to is called Gambler. Ooh. <laughs> Every time she like, Pots and pans. Lots of passion in the vocals. Gambler! <laughs> Shit up on me. I'm a gambler. I'm a gambler. <laughs> on yo, on yo. It's just like I like the echoes. I do. Gives it this rock feel. Like, Gambler, I just can't get over it. <laughs> okay, okay. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I like the second half of the song better than the first half. Again, I think it built in a cool way where. Uh, where. <laughs> where there was more more intrigue and more interest to me in the second half of the song because she was bringing in some other elements to kind of build it up, like the whistling and the echoes, and it just felt fuller and like her vocals were getting more passionate. And yeah, so I like the second half. Um, was not my favorite song that I've heard in this sit down, listen session. The last one I will be listening to for this video is called Crazy For You off of Something To Remember, which I might do a separate video on Something To Remember, so I kind of feel like this is pointless, but someone said that I should include it in this video and I've already said that I'm gonna do it, so I might as well just do it. Mid-tempo, teasing me with the ballad energy, but I think it's gonna be a dance number. Am I gonna fly into the clouds? <laughs> Playing room as the music starts The bodies become one I see you through the smoky air You're so close but still a world away It's giving like mysterious stranger across the bar Is it I'm I didn't process it though. I've never processed it. I, it's good, it's the melodies. I, 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 walk over to where you are. I found love in a bar. It's kind of a, a cool mixture. It's like a mid-tempo ballad, right? But I think it's kind of cool because the love energy is being represented through the slow love-focused lyrics. But the mid-tempo dance beat in the background is kind of representative of the dance club that it sounds like they've met and fell in love in. I kind of like that it's a mid-tempo ballad. It works for the meaning of the song. Ooh, every breath I'm deeper in feel a type of way. I'm blushing. It's that part right 
right there. I do love a soaring chorus. I'm crazy for you. This one, it makes me blushy. Like, it makes me feel like, ooh, she's flattering me. Even though the song's not about me. Crazy <laughs> for you. She loves, she loves that. You know it's true. <laughs> I'm crazy. That was a good one to end on. It lived up, it lived up. The only one that I wasn't crazy about was Gambler. It did not impact me on a spiritual level, but it, if you guys like it, then I trust your taste, but maybe I'll listen to it again, you know? Maybe it'll grow on me, but Crazy For You and Into The Groove, very glad I checked those out. And honestly, as we get further and further through the albums, I'm getting sad because I don't wanna be done with the albums, but I'm also getting so excited because it means I can put her discography on full shuffle and just listen to the entire thing. And any song that comes on, I'm not gonna have to skip it. I am so beyond excited for that because I think she has a very shuffleable discography. Okay, so here we are. <laughs> we have reached the end of the video. Good songs all around, guys. I really enjoyed this video and this, all the songs that I listened to in this, in this video. <laughs> um, something to remember, I'm excited for you. If Crazy For You is on here and I really like that song, I'm excited for the other track. I'm like, I wanna listen to it right now. Uh, but I, I know I shouldn't. I know I should just do a separate video on it, but six songs, I wanna press play. But I have low battery on my camera, so I shouldn't. I totally would. I legitimately would listen to them right now if I wasn't having low battery on my camera, but separate video, okay? And I'll be able to dig deeper and spend more time and, and be more present with them probably, so. Yes, thank you so much for being here once again, y'all. Um, hope you enjoyed again. I'm having so much fun. Feel free to like and subscribe and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.